I'm an artist, and you know what artists do? Yes, you guessed it, decide out of nowhere that they want to model the same thing in programs they never used before. And I did it. Welcome to Cloudless Cloud. In order to do this, we need to decide what we want to model. And we need something emotional, something historical, something that will pass the test of time. Something just as important as the Mona Lisa was for the Renaissance. Reptar. I heard the news has got me feeling like a king. Red this breed model is about to take wing. Cloud is cloud and even the villa. They're the ones to thank for making this dream a reality is no longer a plan. I'm gonna go through different programs and without any tutorial, I'm gonna try to make Reptar. Try is the right word. On the list of programs we have Dust3D, ZBrush, Blender, nothing extraordinary there, Excel, Excel? Wait a moment, whose idea was this? The princess! She's beautiful! Okay, so let's start. This is my favorite program. This is Blender, an open source program. Great program for everything, in fact, and it's free, so you can just go and get it right now. And yeah, maybe this is a bit cheating, but I already knew this program, so... But I wanted to have a, a framework to start the other models on, so that's why we're gonna start with Blender. I really I, I really enjoyed making this horn things. I don't know how they call them, they're like Godzilla fins. Yeah, they were like the most interesting part of each modeling program. It had like its own difficulties, they have a very distinct shape, and it's what gives Reptar at the end its iconic form. So yeah, you know, just taking my time, adding the eyes, everything, quite smooth. Pretty happy with Blender. I used Autodesk Maya for a long time, but I don't know, the interface always felt gray and dull. Never really liked it that much. But if you ever wanted to learn 3D, you can download Blender, it's awesome. It was not so hard, it took a little bit of time. I wanted to make it as precise and as low poly as possible, but also have a little bit of smoothness to it. Also, I didn't want to complicate myself too much with the texturing. So I just added basic materials, nothing too fancy. And as you can see at the end, I added a little bit of light. Then the result is not too bad. Not too bad for Blender. Yeah, it took, I think I exceeded a little bit of the time here, but I'm quite happy with the result. Very nice. So, let's go on to the next one. ZBrush. Now, ZBrush, yeah, maybe I'm... Yeah, maybe I'm um, cheating a little bit again, but I have used ZBrush in the past, a few years ago, but I don't count it because I never really dominated it. In fact, I was so lost here. I was so confused. I, 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 I couldn't... I was so confused. I couldn't remember the keys. I couldn't move around. I was struggling a lot trying to to move around and to remember how to add an object, how to convert it, how to manipulate it. It was I had a really bad time with ZBrush. And and I used it before, so for me it was amazing. I felt really bad at this moment. But I was like, nope, I, I need to go on. No no tutorials. Just gotta wing it. And little by little, I think my, my memory started to come back. Started to remember how, to, how it is to move stuff. And then I decided, you know what, I'm just going to stick to three or two tools. And I'm just going to build it on top of that, you know. So, sometimes I clicked something that didn't happen. Sometimes I clicked something that... I didn't know what it did. Sometimes it broke my model, sometimes it did it, but Ctrl C was always my best friend. Really wanted to give uh, this model a little bit more of a realistic kind of feeling. Yeah, but at this point I, I was I, I was really enjoying myself. I was in my safe spot. I was putting clay, taking out clay, carving in, carving out. Wanted to make some shapes. You know, want to give him a little bit of a smile. Then I saved it. And then I had this horrible ghost in front. 
I had no idea how to take it. And I knew there was a button. I knew there was something I had to do. But I, I, I just clicked too much to everywhere. And then I asked a friend. And he told me, oh, just click this. And then I clicked it and everything went back to normal. So I was like, great. So I kept modeling. Out of the teeth, the eyes. Then, you know, and then I decided to be a little bit more adventurous. I decided to use some alphas and add a little bit of textures. Kind of pushing the realism in this reptar. And even more, after that I decided I should add a little bit of color. And not too bad, the final result is actually pretty decent for somebody who was struggling a lot with ZBrush. And we started with Blanc Bench. You can download it, but I used it on the browser. Somehow it felt convenient and I was very surprised with this program. I've never used it and it just felt so intuitive. I just started making cubes and move them and adding colors and I could just add the texture right in the beginning and I could extrude very easily. I really fell in love with this program. It was very fun. It had this kind of like low poly kind of vibe and it gives you limits and I think that kind of in pushes your creativity. So I was trying to work around these limits. I was trying not to use the things that I would use in Blender, for example, but at the same time, I tried to go with the philosophy of the program, kind of low poly blocky style models. So I was really pushing forward. I was going, I was adding, taking away, scaling, and it's free too. I struggled a little bit with the texture because it was creating a holes, but I fixed it. Fixed it little by little. And the texturing part, man, the texturing part was awesome. I never thought I would enjoy texturing something so much as I did with this Reptar. Anyway, just kept adding cubes, making the teeth, making the tongue. Just everything felt pretty natural at this moment. Some little bugs there with the mirroring, but everything felt pretty nice. And I was seeing my blocky masterpiece almost there. I was very happy about it. Then came the texture part. And boy oh boy, I love I love the texture part. Like just this kind of pixel simple textures and the way it just automatically creates the UVs. Amazing. I just rolled with it. I just added some shadows, some highlights. I just went with the flow. I, I didn't even know what I was doing. I just liked how it was. I just liked how it was turning out. I was having a lot of fun at this moment. And yeah, that's the result. I'm very proud of it. Very, very proud of it. I really like this one. I enjoyed using Block Bench a lot. Definitely going to go back to it. Now we move to. Magica Voxel or Magica Voxel. I don't know how to pronounce it. This obviously gave me some memories of Minecraft, just blocking out. So that's how I kind of started to model. Like I, I imagined myself if I, was, if I was in a Minecraft game and I was just like adding blocks and taking block and adding blocks. And I thought, well, I'm gonna get there eventually. Eventually I'm gonna find the form of Reptar. Pretty easy to use. I was quite surprised compared to ZBrush. They were quite intuitive, not gonna lie. At some point I saw there was a button to scale the whole mesh, to kind of like scale it out in the amount of cubes and that really helped. It made me, it helped me simplify the entire model. So it was very convenient. So I decided to get the basic form there and then scale it back again to a bigger form so I could have more resolution and then refine it there. Also I was kind of like coloring on the way, which was very nice, very easy. I probably think that's a better way to do it, but I was just like doing it on the go. This program even has its own rendering engine. It's awesome. I like it. I'm not sure if this is my style, but Reptar looks awesome. Nice program. Very intuitive, very fun. I recommend it. Okay, next program. Dust 3D. Now this I saw it once in a YouTube channel, 
and I was confused. I didn't know what to make of it, so I decided, well, well why not? It's a node-based modeling program, and it's more complicated than I thought it was, and it's it seems very simple, but once you start getting it, it, there's like a very weird learning curve. So you create your nodes and one node represents an axis and the other one represents the other axis. So whatever you, however you move them, the model moves. And when you start to connect them, they start to create the forms while you give the nodes. And I just didn't know how I could create complex things that I saw on tutorials like animals and faces and everything. And I was honestly very lost. I thought I was lost in ZBrush. Nope, nope. I was lost in Dust 3D. I didn't understand what I was doing. So I had to break the rules and and go see a tutorial. And my god, this guy really, really, really helped me because I was so lost. I just saw his video. He showed us how to do like an animal. And then I was like, okay, I got the basics, and then I started going. It was still a little bit complicated. I felt I was not really grasping it. I got a little bit annoyed. And then the program started to do this Evangelion kind of symbols, which is kind of fun. Like, aesthetically, it looks very nice. The model was not looking as I wanted it. it just kept merging in weird ways, and I, I couldn't do my normal extrudes. It was quite challenging, so I decided to just go with it and make make what a node reptile would look. Weird, kind of abstract, cubist-like reptile. And at the end I somehow added a background inside the program and I didn't know how to take it away without scaling the program, so yeah, I was tired, I was confused. I decided to call it a day, and this was the final result. I'm not quite proud of it, but I don't know if I would return to this program. Maybe to make some simple things, but definitely not something as complicated as the face of Reptar. Now the next modeling program I was not planning to add to this video. It was just like an afterthought. I remembered I had this weird modeling program in my iPad a few years ago, and I, I checked if I still had it installed. So I did, so I decided to give it a try. So I put my screen to recording and I just started modeling. And it's, it's, it's a very weird program. It's kind of like blobs. Like if you would sculpt with blobs, it just makes everything look blobby. And the first half of me doing Reptar, I was really trying to, to get this traditional Reptar head, but I just couldn't, it just felt unnatural. So I decided to just let it go. I was like, okay, this program works with blobs. I'll embrace the blobs. I'll just make the blobbiest reptar the world has ever seen and everybody shall accept it as it. And I just kept going and after that it was quite fun. Like even my favorite part, like the crests, they were very nice to do. And even though I was pretty sad that I couldn't color it, I think my iPad wouldn't be able to support it. But yeah, I'm very happy with the result. Very interesting program. Recommend it. Okay, now, the best for the last. Why Excel? I saw in a video that you could actually import 3D models to Excel and rotate them around. And I thought that it was great and, well, if you could import models, 3D models, and spin them around, then you could technically just create anything in 3D. So I decided, yeah, why not? So I just opened Excel, put on some nice music, and I decided to experiment. I appeared a red cube, but somehow I couldn't change color and that didn't work for me. So I added a rectangle, which has these like 3D settings, and then I just smashed them on top of each other and added depth, added some 3D properties, put them in a very specific perspective, kind of like an orthographic view. And I was doing it. I was modeling in Excel. It was a bit weird trying to put like, uh, trying to put the rectangles back and back and back to make this illusion of depth. But I admit, I, I was having fun. I, I was making a 3D object in Excel. I don't think you could actually export it as a 3D object, but it looks 3D. And oh yes, look at this Raptor, look at this. 
so abstract. Very happy with this. Decided to add to add the final touches with a little bit of color. And there you go, Reptar in Excel. I don't know if I would model something in Excel again, but but you but you surely can. So what did we learn? That ZBrush is a pain if you've never used it for a while. But most importantly, we learned that it doesn't matter what software you use, you can always fail miserably or succeed. So if you know any modeling program that is also weird, you can also put it in the comments and maybe I'll try it. See ya.